episode 14, titled To Be Determined. But you want to go ahead and get this kicked off with a short message here? Yes. Uh, this episode will be tough uh, for some viewers. And in a world where everyone walks on eggshells, our intention isn't to spread fear. Our intention is to spread the truth and awareness. I hope this podcast serves its purpose. Now, it's, this podcast is going to be a little bit more driven towards Americans or the United States of America in particular. And it's a message that there are no more sides between blue and red, between liberals and conservatives. There's only the fight for good against the evil. And you may ask yourself, what defines good and evil? Isn't it perspective? Well, from the perspective of an American patriot living in the United States of America, good is traditional American values. Good is the Constitution of the United States. Good is the protection of America and the security of its citizens, just to name a few. And what is evil? Evil is anyone, anything, or any organization that seeks America's destruction. And it's not always shown to us in the most obvious ways. There is evil in our government, there is evil in the big corporations of America, and there is evil coming across the border of the United States. Compromising the security of U.S. citizens. In this episode, we'll be, taking, we'll be talking about the dangers of our open borders and the guaranteed conflicts that will ensue in the foreseeable future. What do you think about that, Pete? Yeah, I, um, I'm. We're gonna take this with the grain of salt and, um, view it as, as two kids that came from illegal illegals, <laughs> you know. Um, so, luckily, they you know now went through the whole process and. You know, they got their papers, they can travel, they, have you know, work hard and all this stuff. And I know, unfortunately, there's sometimes uh, families go through it and that they can't get, they can't go through that process. And particularly, that's why this outrages me so much is because for those people that are trying to do it uh, legally, you know, mm. all you, <laughs> you get me like when those people that are trying to do it legally, and this is coming from a you know person of of you know just immigrant family they you get a i don't know a freebie uh uh, uh here's fucking food shelter mm -hmm. here's a buzz here's you know here's we're taking our veterans out we got homeless people everywhere in the biggest cities of america you know um so that is what outrages me that this is happening it's we're not you know you know sometimes you know they you know people that are white can't really talk about this stuff because they're mm -hmm. like oh they're racist they're racist so what are you going to say about me now you know yeah. are, am i racist too then you know it's like it's like we're looking at it from a from kids that you know that have this th these backgrounds yeah and that have gone through the whole system of you know, the American dream, you know, it's all up to us to be able to get this American dream. And it's all up to your mindset. But these freebies cannot be handed out. And they benefit only the higher ups. They only benefit them, mm -hmm. you know. And I understand. I also understand that we need illegal, all this stuff, um, immigration. And we need those workers that are out in fields that for sure I wouldn't want to do. And I respect that and all this stuff. And I'm not bashing anything um anything or anyone but it's just like you know you there we we have laws we have laws the constitution of the united states of america and the declaration of independence this these three books cost me 15 dollars. you can educate yourself so much for 15 dollars, and people don't do that people don't do that people read headlines people will fucking listen to cnn people listen to fucking the state of the union was just Two days yesterday or two days ago, which was fucking Holy shit rubbish. So our purpose is here is to maybe maybe you guys have a different uh, point of view and maybe you guys um, you know 
can teach us something. But until then, we have not found something that opposes what the reality is. Yeah. And, you know, let me follow that up with a truth that nobody wants to hear, which is illegal immigration is bad. Migration is not a human right. It's a human trait. And since the beginning of time, every flourishing nation has implemented border policy. Legal migration is good. Most Americans are simply too lazy to do the hard work in this country. And I know this because of my construction background. On site, Mexicans or Central Americans are the hardest workers over their white and black counterparts. So that's good. But there is something going on on the border. And I think that to what you were saying about this book, we have laws. The United States of America is the greatest country for a reason. And what is going now goes against those laws. And I think it's, again, to, to what you were saying, you know, um, if, if, a, and, you know if, a, if a white person talks about this, are they going to be racist? And exactly, what are they going to say about us? Oh, that we're some fucking... White, know, white. Uh, Mexicans would say, oh, look at them fucking, look at those fucking kids. Tienen el nopal en la frente. Well, guess what? Exactly. Well, guess what? Exactly. We're guess what? We're in America. We have to do what's best for America. You know, if 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 you don't if you don't like something, things get the fuck out. It's, it's as simple as that. And and the thing is that we have to, you know, we have to identify what's going on on the border, which is two things. And thanks to thanks to Brett Weinstein, he has given a pretty clear picture as to what is going on, which is there's two sides to this migration story. There is an invasion going on, and then there is, you know, what your regular migration, you know, of, of people pursuing a better life. And there's two distinct things. And to dissect what those two things mean and how to categorize them I think is blinds people and people think that it's just one big mass migration coming into the United States when it's it's not that's just simply not true. You know, we've heard the we've heard the talk from the right that we need to secure our borders, there's drugs coming cr coming across the borders, there's smuggling coming across and you have all these things that that it's it's undeniable that all these things are happening. But now what happens when when these kids are coming across the border and they're being sent, they have numbers written on their arms and they're being sent to where? Where are they being sent to? To sweatshops, to uh, prostitution rings. I don't know. Uh, Dr. Phil has a good uh, segment on that. I yeah. Check, check them out. Uh, if you guys think we're fucking lying, but. Like and, said, and the thing is, ultimately, the information that I'm that I'm looking that I'm looking at is people that are at the border, people that have been to the migration. It's people that have been to these to these areas, and that's ultimately where the all this research had not really research because, like I said, we're coming at it very superficial. Um, it's such a complicated mm -hmm. it's such a complicated topic that has been going on for since the beginning of any nation really for border policy and it will continue going on but but american taxpayers are funding these these kids to be sent into those stretch shops uh prostitution rings um um drugs coming across the the border for those of you that don't know i mean and this is a stat that's coming out of my ass but about 80% of coyotes which are the people that that the people that collect money from migrants and they smuggle them across the border about 80% of those are ran by the drug cartels now back in the day back back in the day i would say probably i don't know 15 years ago i think it was a free market you know in the black market but now 80 to i would who knows probably 100% at this point um of these coyote smugglers work for the cartel. And what they do is 
they give the migrants trying to cross the border, they give him a backpack or this things and they tell them, you know, just carry this across there and leave it in a, in some place and that's it. And ultimately the the security of the border, all of that stuff that's going on right now in particularly, I'm not talking about any other time right now as of 2023 and 2024, it's all this aid that is going towards illegal migration is coming out of the taxpayer's pocket. And so technically, tax Americans are paying for cartels to smuggle drugs across the border. Americans are paying for people to die on their journey, on their migration journey. Americans are paying for children to go into slave labor and sweatshops among how many other countless things that I didn't mention. It's all that, all that, all of the, all of these things are coming from American taxpayers. Yeah. With the, and we just, I don't know. It's like, like we said, it's very complicated. Uh, It's stuff that we don't question. And it's stuff that also irritates me about people that we know we could care. That's what, that's what they mean with um, that quote that, always the Romans, um, they gave, you know, give them bread and circuses and bread and they'll never revolt. It's the same reason. Same mm-hmm. thing is going on here. You know, they give us fucking the NFL, the Taylor Swift shit. They give us all that stuff to just keep us to not, you know, to not, <laughs> you know, to, to, to not it just to keep us, you know? Yeah. From not doing anything, from not investigating, from not questioning, from not, you know. And now that, you know, uh, journalists don't even question their own government, that mm-hmm. all these independent journalists have to leave all these, whether it's from the right or from the left, you know. Shout out to Johnny Harris, one of the best independent journalists out there. Um, the guy's Bob, bro. This, um, this these, the, the thing that I mentioned... And again, you know, from our perspective, which ultimately this is what it is. Um, I know, you know, we stay up to date with the with world affairs. What would you geopolitics? With what would you um say is invasion versus migration? Uh. As a, like, as a, what would I say? it Like, if I was trying... Or, 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 sorry, you know what? Explain to me what natural migration would be, in, in just in your lens. In my lens, this is just without thinking about it. And just, you know, mm-hmm. it would be if I'm, you know, living in, I don't know, probably one of these Central Americans or M- Mexican uh, cities and the cartels getting, you know, fucking our, all our shit up or the government or, like, in Venezuela or... All this thing's going on and I have to leave my family where I have to leave with my family to seek asylum. That is what I would consider migration. Invasion is um, a plan, having a plan, having a maybe, a, you know, a lot of us humans, we 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 like to think of um, we don't really like to think about the future. Law. Mm-hmm. You, know, you and I probably, you, you know, you and I do and a lot of people do. But like a lot of people, we don't really think about it. It's just something you don't really know, something that you can, you do, you tweak a few things and it will give you a different outcome, you know. But what I would consider an invasion is having a 5, 10, 15, 20 year plan to whenever it is needed to, you know, be invaded or be enacted. That's what's going to yeah, I think I think you hit it on the head. Um, and yes, natural migration is again it's a human characteristics that one defaults to since the beginning of humankind. Uh, natural disasters occur. Back then, the the cavemen seeked migration and seeked shelter through migration, and ultimately that's that that is that is what it is. You know, our parents. Our parents came from Mexico in search of a better life. Um, again, I'm in the construction atmosphere, and I'm always curious to find out about, um, you know, people's nationalities and why they came here and where they come from. 
And it's the same thing. They seek uh, the pursuit of happiness, uh, the, the pursuit of happiness, the American dream. Um, they flee um, to in search of a better economic state. And, and you know, that again, I will repeat myself, that is, America does need that. America needs people who are looking for a better life. America needs people who are ready to do the hard work. Because again, uh, and I work in the construction, and this is just my lens in the in the in the construction industry. I don't know about you, but I can fucking shingle faster myself than a fucking crew of five white men, dude. Remember when we did that house, and we we did a, a steep as eleven tour pitch house in Marshalltown, and we tore it off and sh- and uh, and shingled it back up and. The crew next to us uh, were white men, and they fucking uh, not to not that kind of sounds racist. You're um, you are a hundred percent. That does sound racist. But it's but it's just it's just they're white, you know. Um, and they you know sorry not to I I need to interrupt you on this. You know it's funny that you're afraid. No, I'm not saying you're afraid, but you're kind of you have that tension of just saying that. When all you're saying is explaining the features of that <laughs> person, yeah, person, you know. <laughs> and now, now that you mention it, uh, you know the left thinks that you can't be racist to white people, so technically it's not racist. Wow. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness! I, mean, I, I I would hate to be a, a white man. In this time and age, it sucks it because suck. it sucks because you get silenced and you get it's stupid. It's it's fucking stupid is what it really is. But my intentions is not. It, but you're right. I do feel that tension of like, yeah. oh shit, saying white man, that sounds racist. Oh shit, you know, black American. Oh shit, Mexican. Oh shit, and it's it, to to your point. Very curious that that's what society has influenced mm-hmm. me in. But I didn't mean, back to my story, I don't mean it that way. It's because you don't want, you know, you don't want to get in trouble. That's just it. But, like, it's your freedom of speech. speech. It's your freedom of speech. But back back to my story, um, these white guys, they, there's there's something called laying over. So they don't tear off the old shingles. They just put new shingles on top of the old shingles, which is stupid, but it's, it's fast work. We beat them. They took, I think they took like, I don't know, three or four days because we were working in, in, in the town for a few days and we're like, bro, these fuckers aren't done. So we need migrant labor for that reason because these guys have had a tougher upbringing and they're just used to a tougher, you know, and that's the beauty of America. How beautiful is America to where hard work, you can choose to work hard or not. How beautiful is that? Well, I always think back to like uh, when New York City was being built. Those iron workers just oh with no harnesses and stuff, just yes. chilling and, and walking you know, all high up there. So it's like eating, eating lunch, fucking yeah. hundreds of feet up. Oh my goodness, yeah. With oh, that's fucking crazy. But yeah, so that that would be migration now. Invasion, invasion is the scary part. Invasion is what keeps me up at night. Thanks to Brent Weinstein. Go look at his. He, he's a biologist, by the way. He's not. <laughs> he's not. He doesn't do this stuff. Geopolitical stuff. But because nobody else is doing it, he has stepped up for Americans. So thank you, Brett Weinstein. His research involved in that very question: What is invasion and what is migration, and identifying the two things. And according to his eyewitness accounts and research and publications, really, he seen that, first of all, Chinese migrants were at an all-time high. And tens of thousands of Chinese male military age migrants have been coming across the border. And now you can you can you can make the argument that well yeah fucking China's a communist country I would also want to flee that and you know to kudos yeah that that's a good argument but why are they getting special privileged they are being kept 
at a different campsites, different trail points. They're getting sent over the Darien Gap, which we'll cover here shortly, over boats. And you can tell that it is an organized effort because when Brett Weinstein went to these, he, you know, he went to the Darien Gap, which is a, a dense jungle that, again, we'll cover shortly. When he went there, every, you know, you know, the migration, the natural migration, Central Americans, uh, South Americans, um, people fleeing um, the Middle East and all these things going on. They would have to travel through the Darien Gap. And he went and, you know, everybody would, everybody wanted to talk to him. They were open. They were open to tell their life story and stuff like that. But when he went to these other camps, which one of the camps that these Chinese migrants were were at were in a camp called San Vicente Camp. Now, San Vicente um, is just on the other side of the Darien Gap, you know, closer to Central America. Um, San Vicente isn't like a town or nothing like that. It's a camp specifically built for the Chinese migrants to be there. And they have so much things, you know, they have, and he actually speaks about this, that they actually have video um, in Chinese, a cartoon video that make a note of it so we can upload it for people to see a cartoon video showing the route that these Chinese migrants are going to take and in cartoon and what to say and to tell the borders that you're seeking asylum. And then eventually the event, they end up, the end location ends up being in California. And that to me is invasion. That to me, you have military aged men organized with an end goal in mind, you know? And the thing is that all these, you know, these migrants, what's their end goal? Better life. All this invasion going on, what's the end goal? That's to be determined. That's the, that's the scary part that you don't know. You, you know, you, again, you can make the argument that they're just seeking asylum as well. But first of all, this seeking asylum is rubbish. This is something that the Biden administration has put in place to allow such a quantity of people to come through the borders. Dude, I know people that, oh, I seek the asylum. Fuck all you did. They just came over here to the border and not sent, you know, to each their own, you know, everybody has to everybody has to do what's best for them and i guess in this particular instance they're taking advantage of the system and if i was in their shoes i would do the same thing too you, not right now that you're talking about the chinese <clears throat> have you it's a communist country you know that do people know that it's common because you know what you have to do to leave the country in China? Mm -hmm. What? You have to like... You can't just leave the country. I'm just telling you that right now. It's like North Korea. You cannot leave just to leave the country. You got to submit visas and all this stuff. So why are all these people coming here? Did, did you know about this? I didn't know that you have to submit. You have to... I, I'm probably going to get this wrong and whatever, but... You can't just leave the country, bro. It's not... It's not, you know, America is great because we can do, I can go anywhere in the world without the government asking me. It's not, it doesn't work like that in China. So, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, you know. You have thousands, tens of thousands. You know, that's, that is, uh, who did I hear? Uh, Dr. Phil say this. Dr. Phil said it. And you have to file where you where you're gonna go, how long, this and that. You gotta come back. And we'll also we as Americans don't realize is they're very patriotic about their mm -hmm. country. Something that a lot of us aren't. You know, we have this is how good we have it here in America. That I can say fuck America. I can say all this dumb stuff, and nothing will happen to me. Try doing that in another country. So it's like they are patriotic. They will 100% always put their country first. Mm -hmm. So the the fact that, oh, just 30,000, you know, uh, Chinese migrants came last year and then a fuck ton of more this year. Nah, bro, that's a plan. That's a, that's a plan. Like, 
well, and that's just being very speculative, but like, I, well, I it's it's actually not being very speculated because we know China wants to become uh, the global power in in the world, and it's something called the belt the Belt and Road Initiative. China thinks China's you know what China's short term thinking is. 10 to 20 years. They don't think in short terms, oh, this year, next year, five years. They well, that's what I was saying they about. In, they think in 10 to 20 years. And this Belt and Road Initiative, have you seen, um, I think you were actually the one that showed me like a bunch of videos in Africa with Chinese. Uh, They're holding, China, the Africans were holding Chinese flags and stuff like this because China is like investing in their infrastructure and stuff yeah, like this. Yeah, Which, just so you know, China that, wants to invest in infrastructure in Tijuana too. I'm not sure if you didn't know if you knew that or not. But this, it it doesn't matter. It does that 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 does not matter because what also people don't realize is that China owns a lot of farms here in the United States. Mm -hmm. Guess mm -hmm. what? Next to military U.S. military bases. Mm -hmm. Now you can now that you can speculate. You can maybe say. Uh, that it, you know now we're just putting two and two together whatever but as an American you know America's first and that is what frightens me where I'm like huh and then not only that but then you listen to um which I can't listen to him anymore but Mike Baker and he talks about how um I don't know if you know this but what like the Chinese will end up selling all their antennas or whatever to like Verizon and Sprint and all this stuff. So they own, and then they, they, they own, yeah, they own the, the, let's just say like this iPad, they own this, but we can use it for, for free or not. I'm not saying for free, but for a percentage. So all that information is going back to China, like TikTok. <laughs> So, well, fuck me. And I have, I actually have a map here um, of, and what's crazy is I, I'm just listening to this. Um, on JRE, uh, Dr. Phil pulled up a map. I can't find that map anymore, but he pulled up a map of um, who owns what. And actually, uh, um, what's it called? You mind putting this up? Yeah, go ahead. Send it to me and I'll go ahead and get this up here. All right. Uh, and we, this is a weird thing. I don't know if you know, but China isn't the only one that owns land here. Um, it's Netherlands, uh, Russia, Iran, um, uh, I know uh, the Cuba, Saudis. Venezuela, like weird, weird, uh, just people own. But the only one that's huh you know it's, it's chinese is the chinese land they, they, i actually think the chinese own the, like more of less land than all the other countries um so they don't own that much but the land that they own seems to be very you know Str next to the strategically placed yeah strategically hmm. uh, yep yep exactly so yeah you know that's the thing that scares me and again with uh them thinking long term like bro could these Chinese migrants be sleeper cells, sleeper agents, you know, for a foreseeable future, which that speculation we'll cover, we'll cover here later in our conclusion, but is your airdrop on, but oh, it's yeah, it things like that, that, that do frighten me. I should have sent it to you. Yeah, I got a boss. So that's uh, by foreign developers right here. Yeah, so that's the Okay, so this is the Great Farm Invasion of America. Countries where foreign investors own farmland. Iran, Cuba, China, Russia, Venezuela. Here. Real quick, why the fuck are we allowing Iran to owe any to own anything in the fucking United States? <laughs> We are we are literally fighting a proxy war against Iran through Israel and Palestine right now. Literally, Iran is funding Hamas and the U.S. is funding Israel. And we're literally fighting a proxy war against Iran. Why the fuck would we allow them to own and one fucking one fucking 
square foot of land on U.S. soil. And on that point, why the fuck do we let anybody that's not American own anything? Especially these big corporations yep. are these these big corporations are already fucking American farmers. They're already fucking them. They're already uh, taking them to litigation and suing against them. So to not take that, to Bill take Gates their farms too. and fuck that guy too. <laughs> But this is fucking disturbing. Look like. at that. American Farm Bureau Federation. That's the source. So, mm -hmm. Holy sh... That's quite a... Stripes, indi stripes indicate investors from multiple nations. Yeah. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Foreign countries own at least 40... <laughs> at least 40 million, million. acres yeah. of U.S. farmland, pastures, and forest, which officials claim may have consequences for <laughs> national security. No fucking oh, shit. shit. No fucking <laughs> shit. No fucking shit, you dumb fucks. You know, this is fucking stupid. Like, um, I, I heard Tucker Carlson say this, that U.S., that U.S., um, uh, fuck, what do you call them? The U.S. politicians are among some of the most ignorant. Things like this yeah. indicates that U.S. Pol uh, U.S. politicians are some of the most ignorant. And it's fucking stupid. Yeah, see, this is the thing that I'd be, you know, I know it may sound, it, I don't know, bro, like, we're, it's United States. Let's fucking take this shit back. Yeah, it's. Take, it's our fucking land. So it's like, who cares? What are they going to do? Take it to fucking, you know, the World Economic Forum, probably, or NATO or something, you know, or the United Nations. Look, I just seen this right now. First of all, why does China own so much land in Hawaii? There's a base. There's That's where Pearl Harbor was hit, bro. You got to be fucking pulling my taint. <laughs> You got to be fucking kidding me. Venezuela, fucking shit country with a fucking dictator. You got to be fucking kidding me. This is fucking stupid. Part of my language. Damn, it, bro, you be cussing. It's, uh, it, you know, it's stuff like that that truly is, you know, so you put this. China owns a fuck ton of land in the United States. Speculation, guys. Don't fucking... I'm a conspiracy theorist, remember? Because I do my <laughs> own research. China owns a fuck ton of land. China is sending a tremendous amount of Chinese migrants over through an or through organized plan. They have flyers. Uh, they have per diem cards. They have video showing their route. It's organized. Somebody organized it. And, and what... They're just fleeing a communist nation. Tens of thousands of people. You think the Chinese government would not ask themselves, oh, fuck, we just lost a couple tens of thousands of military aged men. You think they're let? You think they wouldn't do something about it if they had so much immigration going out of China? Bull fucking shit. They would do something about it. This, there's no way this is not organized. Well, not only that, but let's try buying land in China. Let's mm. see if they'll let us. Mm -hmm. Let's 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 try doing that over there, dude. The only one that's gonna do let this shit happen is fucking United States. And it, the only one that's gonna let it, it's like uh, like the president from El Salvador, uh, Bukele. He's just like, it's from within. Something's going on from within because yes. this seems like you've seen how he just went in there and changed the whole thing up. Well, he made it look easy. Maybe he just, yeah. so it's like, so, and he, <laughs> the, Salvador was one of the shittiest nations, if not the shittiest country in, in, in the Americas. The, dude, they had fucking, uh, uh, fuck, what's that gang called? The biggest gang in the, the world? MS-13. MS-13. And what? You now they up. don't, now they don't have anything in a country that supposedly doesn't have sufficient resources in a country that supposedly is filled with corruption and he's able to do it yet and he he did a 360 in a matter of years yet we can't fucking fix chicago we can't fix ferguson missouri we can't fix uh san francisco we have fucking shit on new york we have we have fucking shit on on california but yet a chinese fucking communist comes around 
and they clean all that shit up for the fucking Chinese communist. And they can't do it for the American citizens. It's the same thing that we have billions of dollars going to Ukraine. Billions that will go to Israel. And where the fuck are the Americans? The, these fucking corrupt politicians are like, you know what, Americans? How about you just shut the fuck up? Don't say anything. Bend over and get fucked. That's what they're fucking telling us. And then we have this border policy that's allowing so much conflict to come over the southern border. And it's the same thing. Get fucked, Americans. Deal with it. You know, I'm I live in a good neighborhood. I'm a politician. I live in a good fucking neighborhood. You know, my my neighborhood is a fenced in community. Yet you don't want to fence in our borders, borders. our country. Yeah, um, I think there was a st- statistic that we could fix all the homelessness um, in all the United States for twenty billion, and we sent more than fifty billion to fucking Ukraine. Fuck you, homeless American. We're just gonna send it to Ukraine. You see this stuff? That's ridiculous, bro. This that, like and and. And like I said, I'm not a handouts guy, but you don't, you know, you just, you know, the, the Lord teaches you to not judge. And even if we are judgy every day, you know, you, you'd see what Jesus has done with, with what he's, with what he preaches and how the fuck are we going to treat our citizens like that? And dude, have you seen fuck, have you seen a uh, Kiev, Kiev in Ukraine? They're fucking partying. They're walking around like it doesn't even look like a war going on. But yeah, you go to fucking New York and, and San Francisco. You know San Francisco has an app that shows all the feces yes. in the city? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I've seen that before. <laughs> so this is what all this kind of comes into where America is always put last and it's the same old, same old. I'm not saying that to vote left or vote right you can do whatever you want that is the beauty of this country but to take one thing or just to be very close-minded and to uh what is it um what's that saying uh vote blue no matter who you know if you take that (laughs) i heard that shit on the joke but when you take all that stuff like you know i'm gonna vote for whoever I think is going to actually turn this country around. You know, we had never worn, we were never in wars for the four years under president Trump. We were, the the border was secured. He said stupid fucking dumb ass shit. I'm not a big, I'm not a MAGA guy, but I'm just a very realistic America first guy. You know, even, um, uh, what the fuck his name? Uh, uh, what's that president? Or the one that was going to run against Vivek? Vivek, yeah. I don't know why I mistaken because yeah. I liked him so much. Even him, like, we need those type of people that will put our country first. Like, all this Israel-Palestine stuff, the Ukraine-Russia, bro, that is not our problem. That is not our problem. And this is why it's so beautiful to live in this country that the State of Union was a few days ago. They basically insurrected a, a political campaign of uh, uh, the State of the Union. Why was no one took in charge? So it's like, you know, it, it, it's only what is convenient for them. And back to our community as Latinos and as minorities or whatever you want to call it, they only care for us. Like uh, there's a famous basketball player that just said that they only care about us every four years. And every four years, you guys keep falling for that shit. Mm-hmm. Every four years, you guys keep falling for that shit. You know, uh, oh, they care about us. Bro. And I'm going to say this, every Mexican that I know, whether you're Catholic or Christian or whatever you want to say, you guys are all against blue, what blues stand for. Yeah, the blue agenda. The blue agenda. But you guys vote for them because they manipulate you guys. It's so ridiculous. It's fucking hilarious, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude. Mm -hmm. Do you guys not do your own fucking research? Mm-hmm. You guys are just going to say what these people are telling you? Mm-hmm. Univision? <laughs> Fuck. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's fucking. Yeah. You, 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 you. <laughs> you know, it's like, and that's that's the whole point of maybe we should make this fucking podcast in Spanish because that's the whole point where I'm like, you know, 
a lot of majority of the Hispanics we know, they stand with everything that the red stands with, but they only vote blue because because oh, of what? No. Trump, Trump is racista. Esto, esto, oh no, él no, no nos quiere aquí. Shut the fuck up and do your research. I mean, I know a lot of Hispanics that are racist, so <laughs> that's kind of hypocritical. <laughs> nah, Mex Mexicans are amongst the most racist people. Oh, you're anti, you're anti, you're anti Mexican. <laughs> oh, pinche no pan la puta frente. No, bro, I'm fucking Mexican. I'm literally fucking. Both my parents are Mexican. Yeah. No, oh. oh, su puta madre, bro. Yes. Um, you know what's one thing that baffles me? Mm. Like this thing that we're just talking about, and wake the fuck up, and this and that. I think what baffles me the most is that. And I don't know if it's just me. I don't know if it's just the media that pushes so much, um, you know, of of a certain agenda that it seems to me that America's asleep. But people are just sheep, bro. They're just sleeping around. Like, does this shit not anger you that foreign foreign countries own American farmland? How do they how how do they gain this American farmland by there's only one way you can gain American farmland by pushing the small farmer out. All this crime that's coming across the border, like, does that not make people mad to like speak the fuck out? You know, <clears throat> or, I think, or are you so ignorant? Or are you so ignorant that like, oh, Americans commit crime too? Oh, th shut the fuck up. Illegal crime should be at a zero. Illegal crime should be at a zero. Illegal migrant crime should be at a zero, not at a certain percentage, not at one, not at two, not a thousand people died this year of illegal migrants. It should be at zero. We should have it down to a T, but there's something, and maybe it's maybe it's that there is other people pulling the string. Well, sorry, there's 100% other people pulling the strings because we got a fucking president that doesn't know where the fuck he's at. So people are pulling the strings. Who are pulling the strings? Why? And Americans need to wake the fuck up and take America back. Because this shit can go no longer. These conflicts going outside of there, we need to fix our cities. And to your point, to your point, this manipulation that goes on, that you have, for example, Chicago, they have a stupid ass fucking governor and they vote for that. Wake the fuck up. Um, quit being quit getting manipulated you have to start you have to stop thinking with emotions and stop and start critical think and start critical thinking start fucking start realizing what's better for your community start with your community mm -hmm. and then expand mm -hmm. and well, then ex luckily we live in a in in a i would say very good city very good state um the other day uh going on floor towards gray's lake there was so much homelessness and tents up there. I and within a week span, I went back. No more homeless tents. They're, they they fixed it up. They cleaned it up. I'm not sure if they got help. I hope they got help. But at the end of the day, I'm glad that I do live in Iowa because for the most part, we're our community is pretty well taken care of. Yeah, um, it's the same thing with. Uh... BLM. It's the same thing with BLM where you guys fell for it. You guys fucking fell for it. And they didn't help you guys' community at all. And I feel for you guys. You got these organizations buying main ch mansions and cars in California. BLM. Buy large mansions. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's what it stands for. That's what it stands <laughs> yeah. for. So, like, you got all these organizations you know, buying all this stuff with your guys's, I don't know, funding or whatever. And you guys fell for it. You guys fell for it. And they didn't, what I have heard, I, now I don't have that first, you know, but what I have heard, they don't, they didn't help him out. You know what the, you, you well, from what I've heard, and then just, this is just looking at videos, looking at from like black people within, you know, the black community and all this stuff. Um, what I heard is that it even affected them even more. It affected them more because, 
Because wherever all these riots and all these stuff were happening, mm-hmm. all these businesses left and they left them without any jobs, without yes. any hope, without any, mm-hmm. you know, so, so where is BLM? Where is, why aren't we or us or you guys that put a black fucking screen on Instagram? Why aren't you guys hell, uh, uh, holding them accountable? Why? Why don't you guys be like, hey, you know, like, are you guys going to come and help our community out or what? <laughs> so... That is the overall thing that we keep bringing up. It's like, you know. And it goes back to your point that you just made about being manipulated. It it literally, they were manipulated. They were manipulated to a certain cause that led nowhere. And eventually, to what you were saying, you know, where's their help at? Where's this going at? I'll tell you where part of that help is at got sent overseas in billions of money and that is sad that is sad that but again you you have the data in front of you to see what has happened and what what happened and to make a rational decision to whatever da- data is over here whatever is still getting calculated whatever is going to be the next outcome you can you can affect that outcome and use it to help your community yeah i don't know it it's it's it it is very sad seeing this and you know um i i like i said these are all americans that got affected these are all americans that got affected and that's what i very much like you know you know sometimes part of me wants to be like well you guys voted for it is your guys fault deal with it but no like i don't that's very ignorant that's very arrogant for me to say that's that's like you know I'm better than that. And this is why talking about it, maybe, maybe, I mean, for the, like you said, for the two people that listen to this, <laughs> um, you know, this may get somewhere and maybe you guys will listen and maybe, maybe you guys take this and pay attention a little bit more. Maybe you guys don't, it's, it's hard to change from one day to another, but these little atomic habits can Maybe, you know, you maybe you have this at the back of your hand, you know, maybe you guys do your own little research. You literally can just Google the owners of, ba- of uh, like BLM or all these organizations and then see how much they're worth and what they've spent it on. And it's just easy. So, I mean, we can even pull one up. So it's like, hopefully, you know, we, we need to wake up as America. We right. need to wake up. And these, the founding fathers, very intelligent people where i don't know where the fuck they came out this these are they're aliens bro (laughs) and you know the little things that they've said in this book it's like they did it for a reason for to avoid times like tyranny like 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 this They, they they made this so which we do have we currently have a tyrannical government and america what you were saying americans need to wake up and realize that it's not between this race, that race. It's between, um, we're all American. Mm-hmm. We all live in America. As long as we live in America, we have to take care of America. And I think you said it very well. Um, And these, man, and I don't know, it's, just, it's a bunch of crazy stuff, but I mean, I mean, if you want, I'll, I'll read you like not to bore anyone, but like, you know, all these talk about invasions. This talks about invasions, this talks about turning in the government. This we the people have the power to the Declaration of Independence for anyone. Maybe you can just read it online. The Declaration of Independence literally talks about I think the first paragraph about us, the people we have the power to overthrow the government. The government doesn't talk about the the government doesn't talk about um the declaration well not that i know of a lot why because it literally states that if there's tyranny or all this stuff to overthrow them now what did great britain try to do before the revolutionary war they tried to shut them up and take their guns away what the fuck is the government trying to do shut us up and take our guns away yep censorship it's the same it's it's the history repeats itself just 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 maybe you know like look back into you know the you know 
Paul Revere and all that stuff. It's all there. And it takes a few minutes. But if you do your research, then you'll be a conspiracy theorist. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> um, Yeah, you know, and... Man, and all this migration which this administration instigated you know what's one of the saddest thing is the struggle that these people have to go through um again we come from a um mexican environment so and not to belittle their journey but mexicans have it easy dude you, all you have is one border to cross, a desert. Like I said, I don't want to put it, put that effort down. I get what you're trying to say. But this fucking, all these other people that are being misled. Like, for example, right now with the conflict between uh, the Texas, uh, the state versus federal in the Texas border. All these people that made this journey through the Darien Gap in a false promise from an administration, from a federal administration to yeah, you come over here or and, you know, instigating that mass migration and they get to the borders of Texas and Texas wrangles them up like if they were herd, like if they weren't even human, which is something so sad to see that that, hey, look, we're the same species, but we can't, you know, we can't let you in because it's against American interest because we risk putting American civilians lives at risk, as we've already seen as We've already seen happen time and time over again, year after year again. And I think that's one of the saddest part about this migration is that you have such a loss of life. Count, you can't count them because there's no, there's nobody boots on the ground counting all these deaths and doing the research throughout the Darien Gap, which the Darien Gap, if you don't know, um, resides between Panama and Colombia. And it's, about a 60 by 100 miles of dense jungle. It's an obvious marker splitting um, Central America from South America. It's an obvious marker and it's dangerous. It's filled with um, ins it's filled with insurrectionists, uh, with Colombian insurrectionists. It's filled with animals. It's filled with disease. On top of that, you don't have an established trail system. And these people that have to go through there, I think that's one of the saddest things about this migration. You know, whether it's easy to speak from the comfort of America, you know, sitting inside your home. But then when you start looking into the in, into these people and stuff like that, it's something heartbreaking that 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 you're just like, fuck, like these are people, too. And ultimately, I want the best for every one of these people that are in search of a better life. I want the best for them. And I hope they, I hope they, you know, they, they find their peace and I hope they find their pursuit of happiness and their American dream. But the, the sad reality of it is that it can't be at the cost of Americans is the sad thing, you know, like, these migrants that are traveling with children and they're not prepared, which, which Brett Weinstein talks about a lot. They have been fed a false promise and false information that allows them to just gather the things and kind of throw themselves at the wind in, in hope to make it over here. But they're not prepared. We, we've, you know, we're part of the backpacking community and we know what it takes to go on a hike mm -hmm. you need a backpack that carries your load accurately you need mm -hmm. a sleeping pad to keep yourself off the ground because the ground takes takes the heat takes your heat away you need a tent for shelter against mosquitoes uh other small things rain and stuff like that you need a sleeping bag to keep you warm at night you need a lot of food and a lot of water and these people i mean just look at them they have a, a leather backpack. They have shorts. Some people don't lose their shoes because it's so muddy that they lose their shoes. You need water filters. You need, you know. You need you know, so much things. And this is one of the saddest things that 
dude, like just looking at these, look at that little kid, dude. It breaks my fucking heart that, that they could very well have not even have made it. Whoever these picture, these people are in these pictures, it could be a possibility that we're speaking they're about gone. that they're, that they're gone. Damn. Fuck. Damn. You know, when you put it that way. It's sad as fuck, bro. And that's, dude, that is just the migration through the Darien Gap. That's just that. They still have to cross, what, four borders? Four borders to get to the fifth border of the United States? They, And that's if they started at the Darien Gap. What if they started, a lot of the research that Brent Weinstein does is that he finds that a lot of people start in Ecuador because they don't require visas. So you can just fly into Ecuador and make your way up and, you know, through Colombia, eventually to the Darien, to the Darien Gap, eventually to, the, to Panama, and then make your way through, through Central America to make it to the United States border. And another thing that is fucked up is that all of these other states, or sorry, all of these other countries between the United States and wherever their journey lies, they just wave them through. You don't see them helping them out. Yeah. You know, luckily, or I don't even know. I, I was just talking out of my ass. I, I remember the migration that came, um, La Caravana, that happened a few years back. I know, you know, some Mexican citizens were, um, were giving them food and things like that. Were giving them help and aid. So I don't, I, I would hope that these people get some help along the way. But you find that this migration was not only influenced by this administration, falsely so, against constitutional, against constitutional law. But you find that they're also funding it. Which, I repeat, it's sad. It's sad to see these people struggle, especially at the cost of you know, especially for a at the cost of a false promise. But it. This can't happen at the cost of American taxpayers. Americans are paying for this. For these people that migrate through this, and to these people that die on their journey over here, Americans were involved in their death. And you find that the United Nations, along with the United States, is funding this, mm -hmm. is funding this migration. And, and when you see this struggle of migration struggle, you don't find this struggle with the invasion migration. Again, you find that uh, there's a group of mostly military-aged Chinese men that have their own camps separate from this obvious migration that are going through the Darien Gap. On um, they're going through the Darien, they're they're avoiding part of the jungle and going on boat. And going on boat. So for those of you that are tuning in and looking at this, this is the daring gap between Panama and Colombia. And it's about 60 by 100 miles of dense jungle. And again, it has Colombian insurrectionists that, you know, it has cartels, it has drugs. There's just so much danger involved in this. But, you know, it, you know, coming from a, you know, from just being a, a decent human, I hope the best for these people. But this is where a critical cap has to go on and say that this cannot happen at the expense of Americans. Um, you know, it's especially not when you have these stupid proxy wars going on and then this and then. We're hurting Americans by all of these things happening, by not having our 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 border poli our border secured, by allowing all these things to occur. It's at the expense of um, of American citizen security, which is and and you know what's sad about this is that it takes one, two, three, four, five. Uh, horrible illegal um, immigrants that 
that ruin it for these people that are actually do want a better life. Yes. You know, you know, one thing that the one thing that the right loves to do is you, you get a <laughs> you get uh you know an illegal immigrant that murders an American citizens and they put it all over the on. place. Rightfully so, but at the same time you're you know, be careful using these victims as martyrs and you know, be careful of that stuff because that's also that's also not good. Yeah, it's it's not good and it's not right. Mm -mm. And I get it. I get it. They're playing a role. They're playing a role. They're whether you're left or right. That's that's one thing where obviously I do lean more towards the right just because it's like it seems like they have at least common sense. But I don't affiliate myself like that because. You know, then you'll be all right. Then you'll be, and and you don't. There, there always has to be a balance. You know, there has to be a balance. There has to be good from this side, good from that side. I mean, well, at least you hope, you hope. And, um, yeah, clinging onto one side, whether it's all the way left or all the way right, that's it's not good. It's not gonna. We're never gonna get to a place that we need to be here. Mm -hmm. And you know, and clinging on to to them you know yeah and the thing is that this administration this administration has taken on they need to they need to claim full responsibility for their actions they instigated this mass migration but the thing the thing is that what's the plan now you get me what is the plan you you have this mass migration coming in what are you going to do what is the plan because we do have, we already have immigration policy in hand, which, which the INA, the Immigration and Nationality Act, allows the United States to grant up to 675,000 permanent immigrant visas each year across various visa categories. On top of that, they allow for, for example, if if I have I attain a permanent visa from somewhere else in the United States and my kids aren't from the United States, well, now they become permanent residents of the United States through that. And then on top of that, you have worker visas, you know, people that just come over here for labor, you know, and these big corporations use them for cheap labor. It is what it is. That's what they use them for. And then you have them overstaying their visas and that's how you get a that's actually how you get a majority of these illegal immigrants in the United States it's through visa it's through these big corporations bringing mass labor workforce and then they just overstay they don't implement these large corporations don't implement US policy US immigration policy they let it happen because all they care about is a profit and we have some policy in motion but it's not being upheld. This administration refuses to make a plan. All they do is, and the thing is that even Texas, the Texas, they just get them. They Because they don't want them in Texas, they ship them out mm -hmm. on yep. buses. Uh, the, U, the United States government has admitted to sending airplane full of illegal immigrants across the country. Mm -hmm. They've admitted to that. It's a fact. At whose expense? American taxpayers' Us. expense. Our expense. Us. Not only that's, and you know, I that's the least part that I care about. The this funding, this shit. You know, uh, the end of the the Constitution says it. There's nothing certain but death and taxes. <laughs> I know we're gonna get taxed. Benjamin Franklin until the end of life. So I don't care about this ir irresponsible spending. What I care about is security and. And where are my kids going to going to grow up in? A fucking place like Chicago? Shit. Ferguson, Missouri? Shit. San Francisco? Shit. In California, you got fucking people shooting themselves up and New York, fentanyl. You know, that's that's my biggest concern. Not to mention the possible Chinese invasion that's that's occurring on the back scenes of this of this lens that is that is happening. You know, so you, it seems that it is from within, 100%. It is from within. within. And 
not only that, but what surprised me is when we took a, when we took a, a trip out west, both times that I went out west, you know, it's very different from the Midwest where, uh, where we go to Target and we can just grab whatever we want and just go pay like normal people, like literally normal people and just grab. I can't get a toothbrush without calling on a, on a worker on assistant that can you know open up these fucking doors yeah. and it, it, this is what i don't like that when you're very right you'll be like oh democrats democrats you know democratic city and blah, blah blah this and that and i understand that and it's kind of true though you know you look at all the democratic demographic cities and look where they're at compared to, you know, rural areas or, you know, just areas that actually take care of themselves. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and a, a part of this is is traveling. And a lot of people don't travel, which I've figured out. A lot of people don't travel. And a lot of people have a lot to say, whether it's from Mexico or from, from the Middle East or from, from uh, Europe and all this stuff. But once you travel, you actually analyze everything very differently and you analyze that whatever we have here in the United States of America, we are we should be all grateful for it. We should all be grateful for it and not take anything for granted. And that's what people that don't travel, people, you know, that don't, you know, even just go to just travel within the country, don't realize. And I mean, I've been in Europe, I've been in the Middle East, you know, and uh been to Mexico, all those places, and all those places are beautiful, but I don't feel that that safeness that I feel here in, in the United States of America. I know we have the shootings and all that stuff, but trust, like, and, you know, and we just take it for granted. Mm -hmm. We care about, uh, you know, foreign affairs that sh don't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd rather care about about, you know, our homeless situation and our veterans that are getting kicked out of New York for these migrants. And these the Chicago Hare has a section of where they let migrants sleep and stay and eat and all this stuff. And also a lot of other airports. I rather more care about what's happening here in this country and fix it. And then and then because we are the greatest nation in the world. And then help out and then help out. But if we can't fix our own country, what makes us think that we're going to fix others? Mm -hmm. Well said. Um, you know, and it's simply that, that just corruption of, of American politics and in, in big corporations and all these things. And, and, you know, it's funny, we went to uh, Florida when we went on a cruise and we were in this fucking ghetto-ass fucking little small town or small suburb or whatever. I couldn't even get deodorant without asking for the a, a worker to unlock the, the case. Where at? In somewhere, in, I don't know, somewhere close to... Somewhere in Orlando. Really? Yeah. Florida's different, though. Florida, when I've been to Florida, it's it's like being here kind of like in iowa oh no that was in las vegas yeah that's that was what in I was las like, vegas oh sorry what? no that was in las vegas i was like what i was like no, dude florida i went to florida and it's exactly no, like, yes. here, like in the midwest no that was in las vegas sorry and <laughs> i was like what that does not sound right yeah and you know in las, fuck i fucking saint Tamanium actually has it taken care of in there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's crazy that again you know these people just get manipulated like, you know, is that really how you want to live? You already live in the greatest country in the world and you want to live in 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 such a scum place. Scum. California is scum. It's the gutter. It's it's shit, you know? How how can people all everybody that lives in these places that there's feces on the ground, every single one of them is guilty of that though. That's the thing. Well, it's because they they aff affiliate themselves with a part of whether it's a left or a culture like so they don't want to be proven wrong or right. 
you know, like they that that's the that's the that's the that's the bad part about it is that, you know, all these people in California want to say all oh, this and this and that, and y- you guys don't even go through some area. I we have family in California. Every time I'm like, hey, let's go there or whatever. Oh no, I don't go to those areas that much. I'm like, so you, so, so, but you live here. Why wouldn't? What? Uh, doesn't make fucking sense. I'm like, why the fuck would you even live there then? Mm. So. But they, it, it's part of a culture where, and I'm not talking, I'm, I'm talking the majority where they affiliate themselves with something and they're like, you know what, bro, like, you know, uh, we'll just not go there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You're not going to fight for a place you live and you grew up in and at least talk to representatives and, you know, start with, like how you said, with your community. It's doesn't make sense. I mean, I'm glad that I'm from my one. I don't really have to do that because things are getting, things actually are getting taken care of. But yeah. I mean, we all have our own faults and everyone, you know, no, 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 no worse perfect, but I at least can go into Target and get whatever I want to get Yeah, well, without calling someone. Yeah. And it's funny because, because of legislation freedom within these various states, you find that a lot of crime that happens and particularly illegal crime illegal migrant crime you find that they go and rob in new york because you know they have the stupid policies of you can rob up to 900 dollars and you know not get <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. some stupid shit like that which what kind of a politician do you have to be you know to compromise with a fucking with a with with, with crime <laughs> yeah like are you just that fucking stupid to just allow crime to happen in general. And I can't, I, I think it was PBD that said it, that you you have crime because of how tolerant you are towards it. Mm-hmm. If you're, if you if you don't tolerate it all, there's no crime. Mm-hmm. And you find that these, um, and I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure it's not just illegal migrant crime. I'm sure it's regular crime as a whole, but they go and they rob in these places they rob in these places that have, uh, you know, not as tolerant crime laws. And they go and spend in the red states. They go and spend them in Miami. They go, <laughs> you know, they go to the beaches and shit like that. And they rob, sell it, and then spend in these red states because they know that they're not. That's where they want to be. And they know that, the, that they're just so tolerant to crime that, you know, it's getting caught is not a big deal as long as you're under a certain dollar threshold, which is completely ridiculous to me. Um, but, uh, yeah. You want to go ahead and uh, get to our conclusion? Yeah. Let, let, me, let me go to the restroom first, though. So, let's go ahead and get this wrapped up. But first... You know, for all those people that are in here trying to, you know, get citizenship through the legal way, how must it feel for them? And I say it this for this reason, you know, my mom spent what, I don't know, six, eight thousand dollars to get her citizenship. Um, my, I know a lot of people that are paying a tremendous amount of 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 money to get citizenship, you know, eight, ten thousand dollars, lawyer fees, all these things going on. And a lot of the time what they get in result is um a castigo. It's um fuck how to say it in English. Is uh they get penalized. Pen- yeah. They get penalized um, you know, for being here illegally to begin with. And they have so the result for that is that they have to go to Mexico for a Duration of period, whatever they deem five it, to ten, yeah, five to ten years, whatever they deem it. So sometimes it's little as two years, uh, and then you can come back, and then you can reapply. And and you have these people that are trying to do it the legal way, getting fucked over. First of all, they already spent the money. Second of all, what about the time that they spent to try to? go through the legal process my my mom lost her dad and she could not go to mexico to see to to bury him 
because she was in progress. She couldn't get she couldn't get um, uh, a visa or permission to leave, and she spent over twenty years without going to Mexico because she did it the legal way. It took her twenty years. Uh, on top of thousands of dollars to finally get citizenship, to finally get a green card, to finally be able to be here and enjoy the fruits of what is the American dream. How must it feel for her to have gone through that? <laughs> and then you find, you get people that are, you, you see that they're brats. I'm not, I, I, I saved it and I'm going to send you the file. There's this fucking fuck face boasting boasting on fucking social media oh guys come over here the american government is paying my hotel they give me 500 dollars a week this and that i don't even work and i'm not going to work this and that everybody should take advantage of this you and you get people like that 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 just hands out imagine how that must feel well and not only that but um, there's people that have it worse. There's people that have it worse that can't, that paid all that money and then they, they're, they were told that they got to leave. Mm -hmm. They were told that they got to leave. They were told that they can't be here and whatever. And it's just like, <laughs> you got these fucks coming over. And now I don't know if you noticed, but I think New York, uh, the New York center or whatever, I can't remember. What the, I'll have to look it up. Uh, they're trying to pass a bill to give each uh, migrant like 10k, and and the you know New York. I'll visit. I'm gonna visit it uh, at the end of the year, but I've heard that it's not great. It's people all sleeping on in the in the streets. Uh, a lot of them are veterans. Um, and, you know, and these, these ungrateful fucks are out here getting, getting handouts. And that is what I can't stand for. I can't stand for that because America is first, mm -hmm. and, you know, <laughs> so not, not only that, but something that's going on all over conservative media right now is. The death of Lake and Riley. How do you think that mother feels to have a country that has failed her and took her 22 year old daughter away from her because of an illegal migrant that was already caught on the border? I'm not sure if you knew that, yeah. but he was already caught on the border. Um, I think that I said something along the lines of um, they were worried about him because he was endangering a, a 17 year old. Damn. Uh, minor and they just let him go and i hope that family finds peace and it's a very sad thing to do but how do you think she also feels having having a corrupt system that has failed her and to your point these people are just you know they you know, it's one. They don't give a fuck. They, they, they don't give don't. a fuck. They, and, they don't give a fuck. And let's be careful here because it's not all of them. It's it's definitely a. It's, it's not all of them, but the thing is that they will ride a a side, and we're never gonna get to where we need to be by riding a side. So let's just say there's a Democrat on you know on the Biden administration that is against it and. Which I don't know if you've seen, but I think I'm gonna I'll get it. I'm for sure gonna get it wrong. But there was like seventeen, uh, uh, seven or it was I think it was something having to it was seven, seven or seventeen um, Democrats that didn't want to pass the Lake and Riley Act. Yep. So it's just like, what? The, oh my goodness. What dude. the fuck? And what? <laughs> and you got our fucking president calling her Lincoln. Lincoln Riley and it's just like I, I get it you know now I'm writing a fucking side and whatever but like but are you though no because, I'm writing because, a fucking American side because she she's not the only one that has been failed there's uh earlier this year five time deported illegal five time um he hit he he was involved in a hit and run he was 50 the illegal was 15 years old 
Um, I don't want to name that piece of shit, but he was involved in a hit and run and he killed a young boy. And he was later charged with DUI charges. It's uncertain as to that's how the hit and run was involved. Five time deported. And it took five times for the system to fail. And then he eventually took a young boy's life that had his entire life ahead of him. And you find this corrupt system, it's a failed system with no plan in action. And it goes both ways for Americans. It goes for those people that are trying to get their citizenship. It goes for those people. And you just have a bunch of hands out, handouts going everywhere with people that are in, that almost seem bratty and entitled to receive it and want more than what is already being given. So... You also got, uh, like, for example, here, I, I saved this because it's the same thing. Jen Psaki mocked, you know, Virginia voters for being concerned about the border. And Psaki lives in an enormous safe mansion in Arlington, Virginia, 30 minutes away from her home. Jeremy Paul Casetas was killed by an illegal immigrant hmm. while playing in his stroller. Oh, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's incredible. That's not, uh, shouldn't happen. This is the thing. This piece of shit. This, th this, this is the thing. And look at this, this little, little sweetheart. I mean, I'll, I'll pull up the, th this is the thing that, and, and the thing is that, you know, without trying to write aside here, the thing is that on one side, it's, it's injustice because this should not be happening. This right here, this little fucking book prevents things like that from happening. I'm not sure if you've seen, but um, the courts decided that Texas did not have its right to protect itself, which, which is it actually it goes against the Constitution yes, of Independence. And I just I literally just read it. I read this whole thing. And then the other side would say, well, oh, Americans commit crime. Americans are school shooters. Americans are this or that and that. Shut the fuck up. We should have 0% illegal crime. Mm -hmm. Illegal migrant crime should be at 0%. Mm -hmm. It's, I don't know, dude. And not to, like I said, I think if we bring up all these people, which may they, the rest, may their souls rest in peace. And, you know, it sucks that it was a failed system that this, that they died off of a failed system but not to you know just bring up you know all their names and you know because but what do you think about this like what how how do i want to bring it up do people not realize that this can effectively change or manipulate or tweak the election results especially this year that's the election year <clears throat> and people don't realize that you know and i have it here that the census includes all people including illegal immigrants for you guys that don't know that um, for deciding how many house seats each state gets. So the results in democratic states, and I'm, you know, I'm just saying because, you know, they're the ones that have more illegal immigrants in them get roughly 20 more house seats in which another, which is another, you know, it goes to their advantage. It literally goes to their advantage for them not to deport or for them to bring him in or, and, and, you know, and for them to allow all this stuff that's happening. And also that the house seat determines how many votes each state has in its electoral college, which, you know, if you don't know what that is, the electoral college is what we, it's like every I don't want to get it wrong because I want I want to I would like to get the electoral college right, but um although they the illegal votes don't count they technically 
do yeah. determine the outcome of races, of the presidential uh, races. Yeah. So, you know, like a place like, um, like I think Kentucky has six representatives, but California has six extra seats, more extra seats because of their the legal population. Yeah. So, and it's, you know, uh, yeah, and it's one of those things that turning illegal migrants into voters might be a certain agenda that they want to push but they already they're already serving a purpose in elections besides which turning illegal migrants to voters is one of the stupidest things and it's already making a an impact on american on american election outcomes and that's not only the first one that's not only the only thing um, and we're kind of getting to our conclusion territory of what this, what are the conflicts, the, what are the guaranteed conflicts that are going to uh, uh, arise arise in our f- foreseeable future, which that's definitely one of them, is turning, turning illegal aliens into voters. As you just stated now, they don't necessarily have to vote in an election for them to turn the tides in an election outcome. Mm-hmm. So you have that. You also have, keep in mind that our military numbers are low right now. Uh, And that's because of uh, what happened through COVID and vaccines and stuff like that. Uh, You know, our American patriots understood that it was unconstitutionally wrong to make somebody take a vaccine. So they just opted to leave. And um, there's a big crisis going on in, in military um, in military personnel, there's actually people are trying to be reassigned from certain departments to fill in gaps in other departments. So that is also a possibility of of offering citizenship or green card status for military services. Even a blind man could see that if this administration gets elected for a second term at presidency another four years it only took four to get into a proxy war another four years could potentially get the united states at risk to enter a a war with american citizens on potentially foreign soils the conflict would be most likely with either iran or china if they decide to invade taiwan that is that and that South American one. Which one? What, what's the South American one? Oh, uh, uh, with um, with Ecuador wanting to uh, invade. What is it? Guana? Is it Ecuador or is it Venezuela? Uh, might be Venezuela. Uh, let me check real quick. What is uh? So you have so you have that outcome, um, which would be. Are you looking it up? No. Oh, which would be um, like like what happened when um, when the World War started to happen. You know, you still had uh, you know pretty bad segregation against the blacks. But oh wait, we get into a war, and all of a sudden now you want to incorporate them into our military services, and <laughs> you know it's so you have that, and then. Hold up. Let me let me look at this uh, conflict so we can get it right. And yeah, Venezuela, Venezuela uh, is wanting Guana. to in- yeah, Guana for all your resources. Which does that sound familiar? U.S. mostly <laughs> like most likely did that uh, against Afghanistan. So you have that. Not only that, but one of the scariest ones. Do you remember um, these military-aged men from China coming over? Yeah. As migrant forces. Yeah, and they asked them. Do you remember? And I ta- I, I talked to you about this years ago about China potentially being on a collapse of civilization because of their 
uh, their one child or two child mandate, some stupid oh, yeah. shit like that. Yep, 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 and yep. they were they were having an increase of males and a decrease of of females. Curious to see that they're sending a lot of their Chinese males outside of their country, and it could be that that was never uh, a oh, collapse shit. of civilization. That was it, a plan. It could be that it could possibly be a plan of the Belt and Road Initiative. <laughs> And that now they are deploying this force of majority male personnel coming out. And what could this be? Could this be that they are deploying their force and, or are they selling labor towards the United States? Again, the United States now has uh, understood that they cannot contain the American civilization during COVID. The, the American citizens, you know, don't, are, they're, not, they're not for that rubbish. Could it be that they can now offer citizenship or green cards to these military individuals and they can serve lockdown mandates now? That is also a possibility that they can serve lockdown mandates against and against a population that is not patriotic. Americans won't serve unconstitutional rights against Americans. Yeah. But you know what will? Foreign, foreign nationals will. They don't care as long as they have they're incentivized to. That is a real possibility. As well as in result of the Belton Initiative Road um, ensuing internal inflict harm within our na our national security. So you have four very um you have four outcomes that that threaten the future of the United States. And I don't know about you, but that makes me, that frightens me. And ultimately that was the message from my intro. It, there's no more sizes. There's no more left and right. There's so much unaccounted for people in this nation. There is an agenda being served. And ultimately Americans need to be prepared for what's to come. Because I'll tell you this now, call me a fucking prophet, if you will, call me Nostradamus. Something is going to happen in the near future, and it might be sooner than later. You know, and the thing that scares, I mean, I, I know that's scary, but the thing that sucks is that people weren't prepared. People are, uh, are out there living their lives, having fun. And until shit hits the fan, that's when people are going to be like, well... Maybe I should have done something. Maybe I should have just paid attention to maybe like I like I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'd rather be prepared than than get caught fucking red handed. I'd rather be a whatever you want to call me, a conspiracy uh proper proper um all that shit. I would rather be like that than they're here. Mm. They're here. So you know. It's hard. It's hard because, you know, people have people have their lives and, you know, people, you, you know, you go to work, you don't really want to worry about other shit. You don't want to have stress free, all this stuff. But, um, you know, it's just about your mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, these are our rights and it is up to us, the people to keep him in check. Oh, yeah. Other than that, but that's uh, that's all I got. Unless you want to add anything else. Yeah, I um, I want to leave off with a note from uh, from George Washington himself. The power of the Constitution will always be in the people. It is entrusted for certain defined purposes and for a certain limited period to representatives of their own choosing. And whenever it is exercised contrary to their interest or not agreeable to their wishes, their servants can and undoubtedly will be recalled. Damn. It is up to us. And, I mean, I guess Taylor Swift's more important than us, so. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for today. Episode 14, title yet to be unknown. Uh... You know, stay ready, guys. Uh, understand the geopolitical affairs and how they can um, interfere with uh, U.S. policy. 
just be aware, stay ready, and on to the next one. Peace out.